the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. Hey, what's up, and welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about Tales from the Dark Side, the horror anthology television show created by George Romero and Richard Rubenstein. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Today we're talking about Halloween Candy, directed by Tom Savini and written by Michael McDowell from October 27th, 1985. So Tom Savini's back on the show. Good old Tom is back once again. Yeah. Previously on the on Tales for uh, uh, the Lizzie episode. What the hell was it Inside called? the Closet. Inside the Closet. This is the second episode that he's coming back and directing and also doing special effects for. I think this is the only other episode that he's done in the series. Yeah, oh. this is it. It's, it's just, like he did Inside the Closet and this one. Yeah. And they're both the best episodes of, not jumping ahead. But yeah, but I would agree with you. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. It's pretty it's pretty damn close. I mean, I, like inside the closet, I think we said was was our favorite, if not best, from the season one. Sure. And I gotta tell you, Halloween Candy is a contender yep. for season best of season two. I mean, we'll get there eventually at the end yeah, of the season. Don't want to jump ahead, yeah. give away the rest of the season. But but, but there might be a little foreshadowing yep. here. <laughs> okay. And also this episode, now we're we're five episodes into season two. This is almost like a reward. For getting through the initial hump. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I guess so. So yeah. for everyone following along and watching these that were kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're back on track after, especially after Parlor Floor Front and this one. It's like the ship has been righted. Yeah. We're back on track with horror in our horror anthology show. At least for the time being. Yeah, for now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well, we don't know what comes next, or <laughs> I don't know at least. <laughs> so yeah, so not only does Tom uh, direct this one, but he also does effects, but there's also an all-star team working on this, guys. Yeah. We got Howard Berger and Greg Nicotero and Ed French working on this episode. Oh, okay. yeah. All hands on deck here. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like dream team. Yep. And another thing I just want to note before we before we get to the Fangoria thing is Phil Abram is uh, doing the cinematography for this, which we'll talk about, but I think is one of, one of the best shot episodes that we've seen so far. Yeah, there's some weird camera th techniques going on here. Yeah, especially later on when things get a little, you know, hectic, mm -hmm. mm. for lack of a better word. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, some really creative shots and like how things are done. It, it's fun. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, it, it's fun to see this and that because he also uh, directed or or shot um, five episodes of Daredevil, like the series with uh, uh, Charlie Cox. Okay, the one for Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, and two episodes of Castle Rock. And a shit ton of Orange is the New Black. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. Huh. But with that being said, uh, can we get that Fangoria synopsis, please? Yeah. So here's the official Fangoria synopsis. Year after year, grumpy Mr. Killip refuses to give trick-or-treaters a single candy bar. Late one hollows eve, a miniature goblin arrives at Killip's door to teach him a gruesome lesson. Wait, I thought we were doing Tales from the Dark Side, not trick-or-treat. Dear Michael Doherty, <laughs> you have some explaining to do, sir. This is fucking verbatim the rat, the last story in Trick or Treat. It like is. it's the spirit, the literal spirit of no. Halloween incarnate terrorizing this old man who is just a mean son of a bitch who hates <laughs> Halloween and doesn't want to give out candy to kids and shit like get off my lawn type stuff. I mean, he doesn't go so far as the guy in the pilot who's got like a contraption to like fool people to come into his house. Well, Gidgen, Gidgen Hackles, he loves Halloween, man. He wants to scare the shit out oh, of those right. kids. He's, he's the other yang on the, uh, the, yes. the yang yeah. of this guy's yang. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, they, they both get visited by somebody who uh, doesn't agree with what they're doing, no. but different results, I guess. As spooky as all the denizens of Halloween are, they're they're pretty good, uh, you know, good, I don't know, entities. Well, they're and, from Halloween Town, obviously. Yes, uh, yeah. You know how, like, everybody's real nice in Halloween Town in uh, yeah, Nightmare Before saying. Christmas? Yeah, they're, they're, they're scary, but not mean. 
They just look that way. They can't yeah. help it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just little rascals. Yeah, get into mischief. They'll scare you, but they don't want to hurt yeah. you. You know, but this one does. Well, maybe little <laughs> goblins. So we get introduced to Mr. Killup, who's played by Roy Poole. Um, and this fucking guy's like in a neck brace. And, and he, he loves Buzz too. Yeah, he does. He sure does. And he's just like the the biggest curmudgeon you could ever like imagine. Yeah, we some get crotchety old man living by himself. And like ultimate stereotype. Yeah, mm-hmm. and his son comes by to drop off candy and like food and stuff for him, and, like to check up on him. And like you through through the passage of all this dialogue, you kind of gather the fact that like this man has lost all will to like live or like respect for anything or care in the world. I guess because his wife has passed away and he's just like, I don't know, I guess that like destroyed him. But he also hasn't been a great dad to his son yeah. either. So it just sounds like a son of a bitch from top to bottom. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, his son just comes by to check up on him and feels bad for him, but he under he gets how his dad is. Yeah. And he's just fed up. Not only is he fed up, but he's like, I'm not cleaning your fucking house after the kids egg it and soap your windows because yeah. you didn't yeah. give them any yeah. candy. I'm not climbing yeah. these trees to get the toilet paper yeah. out. He's like, I brought kids. candy. You're going to give it out and they're not going to trash your house. You lock the windows because they, they sneak in. They do that now. If you don't give them candy, he's like, Jesus Christ, dad, just give them the candy. Like, what's <laughs> yeah. the problem? Uh, he definitely is the kind of the son that's only sticking around because there's a blood relation and is questioning every day why he continues to do it. Yeah. And like they have this. They also have this exchange, too, where like he's, he's like, he's like, yeah, well, you know, when I was a kid and we went to Miss Whatever's house and she didn't give us candy, you know, I cut the her garden hose off <laughs> and like shaved her. Cat. And shaved her cat. And he's well, like, well, she's dead, so I'm the mean son on the block. Yeah. Get that award now. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And the son here kind of like in a little bit reminds me of uh, like James Lorenz. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, a little oh, bit. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's played by Tim Choate, who was in uh, Tim Choate. <laughs> That's an unfortunate can't say last that on YouTube. name. Can't we? Tim Choate or Choate. It's C-H. Choate. Probably Choate. <laughs> uh, he's in Blowout. And Ghost Story. Oh, Chodes and Blowout. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The adult section. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, uh, so he drops the candy off and he's like, he's like, all right, dad, I'll come back tomorrow night. Um, oh, the candy his dad doesn't want, by the way. Oh, yeah. He's like, you better give all this candy better be gone. Um, and you better give it out to the kids because I'm not cleaning the shit up again. And he's, I, like, he's like, hopefully one of them has a sugar rush and dies right there in the front step. And I'm like, holy shit. This dude. guy's yeah. mean. <laughs> this guy, like, is he, he's no remorse. I got to take my thinking brain off watching this one because I'm like, well, just turn the porch light off, dumbass. And I'm like, oh, wait, then there's no no story. There's no show. Keep it on. Keep it on, old man. Keep yelling at those kids. <laughs> I hate Halloween. I hate being bothered. And he's like, well, I told you to come over, dad. And like, and he's like, no, I got to hold down the house. Make sure they don't destroy it. <laughs> got to protect like, this gotta house. Protect what it. are you going to do? You're doing a neck brace. Uh, yeah, but he also like sits like in the recliner in the other room that's like a mile away from the front door. So as soon as the bell starts ringing, he's ah. I gotta, I gotta walk all the way over there with my broken fucking neck. It's just, just a really sad part too, where he's like, he's like, you know, I'll be. His son's like, I'll be back tomorrow with the groceries because, like, what do you got? Like three eggs in there, or yeah. some some mayonnaise and some Swiss cheese, buttermilk, and he and he's like, you've been stuffing yourself, haven't you? And he's he's like, nah, I, 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 that's all I do is eat, nothing else to do except eat. I'm like, dude, it's like sad old man, like really sad. Yeah. Can you bring me some of those waffles? Not the not that shitty not the kind. Fro- the real frozen the, ones. The real frozen ones. Yeah. Not the shit you not pour out of a cart. That was, that was kind of great. I, I like that. And look, you better give out that candy or you're going to deserve what those kids are going to give to you. I love there's a sign outside, too. Um, no solicitor. No yeah. salesmen. No uh, no uh, uh, census takers or, or religious, religious fanatics. fanatics. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Didn't need to be there. Nice little yeah. touch. I, yeah, I like that, too. That he just nobody can knock on my fucking door, yeah. man. <laughs> So all these little kids start coming to the door, and they're all played by the same guy, Gary Pratt, who's also- Oh, uh, he plays all the kids. A little man, yeah. But okay. somebody else plays the goblin, mm-hmm. which we'll get to. Oh, okay. Got you. So we see, you get like an Easter bunny and a clown, and you get Dougie from Satan's Little Helper. He comes yeah, he's there. All sorts of weird little costumes. Yeah. He's like, what, did you change masks or something? Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, apparently he did. He's like- not giving the candy out. It's right there. And he's opening the door for him. He's opening the door. He's like, get out of here. Don't pay yeah. my door. I'm gonna I called the cops and you you're you tell your mom you're a wicked yeah. child and all this shit. Oh, yeah. The uh, the first kid that shows up, it's like he just says, like, I'm I'm not giving you candy. Kid's like, all right. <laughs> Puts his bag down, pulls out spray paint. Yeah. He's like, Oh, I'm prepared yeah. for this. Yeah, he's gonna mark the <laughs> house. Do you ever um, do that as a kid? No. Nah. Do you ever carry around spray paint if someone didn't give you candy? No. That's a hell of a thing, though. <laughs> I remember going out on like uh, mischief night a couple times. That was about it. When I could sneak out. Yeah. Yeah. 
But it's uh, like eggs and toilet paper. Eggs yeah. and toilet paper, yeah. shaving Spray cream. Paint. Yeah, no, soap. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah he just stayed inside, Harmless. watched The Simpsons, and just went on a fucking sugar high, <laughs> eating everything in the bag. <laughs> I love, I love he, he, I love when he opens the door. He's like, I don't have any candy. I'm sick. Can't see that? I'm wearing a neck brace. Get out of here. <laughs> and it's like, you have to think, is the neck brace real? Or did he just like throw it on just to play victim? And probably it's that. Maybe yeah. to people, so people feel sorry for him. Maybe. Maybe he's just so like, or they see the neck brace and they're like, oh, I'll leave him alone. I won't knock on his <laughs> door. Well, maybe he's like so upset that like he can't keep his head up. So he needs the fucking thing there. Like, <laughs> well, he does have his TV remote built into his fucking yeah. recliner. So anything to get him comfortable. So he only has to move like. Eh. <laughs> yeah. So. So, yeah, Dougie from Satan's Little Helper shows up and he's like, Candy, you want candy? He goes. He's like, hang on one second. Oh, this he, part's great. He goes to the fridge and he like grabs honey and like Elmer's glue and like Mayo, mayonnaise. Yeah. And instead of just giving him the fucking candy, he like makes this concoction of shit. Yeah, he's like, you want candy? I'll give you candy. Goblin <laughs> candy. And he like sco- spoons out this shit in this kid's bag. So uh, everyone at home, grab your mayonnaise, some <laughs> Elmer's glue. We're going to make some, some candy. We're make some goblin candy. Oh God. <laughs> that took so much effort. Like, how long was that kid standing there? Like 10 minutes right. while this congealed? So then now we get like these flashes that happen, which mm. I don't know if I'm crazy about for this edit, mm-hmm. um, but there's like flashes of this demon we're about to see, like the spirit of Samhain or, and like f- glimpses of like a dead body and all this kind of stuff, um, which, you know, it's fine for the foreshadowing and stuff, but like, I think it's a little too much. It gets a little heavy, especially at the end. Especially at the end, because yeah. like now we're like filling out time and like, I guess they thought like it was too slow, so they needed to yeah. chop that in there. And it's also like overlaid like the TV static, so it's like, well, did that really happen, or was it just some weird thing on the TV? I yeah, love that like, too. It gets a little weird where you can't tell if he's like having a dream, mm. which I guess like is he the fell point. asleep watching TV. Yeah, and it's fun how it plays with that. It's like, what's actually real here? Exactly. So his he falls asleep. Yeah, and this TV static, like you said, and there's just like incessant doorbell ringing. And he wakes up out of his chair. Yeah, and he's it's like eleven thirty. He's like, it's eleven thirty. Who the is knocking yeah. at the door? He so he so he goes. He's like, get out of here! I don't have any candy. Go home. Tell your mother you're a wicked child. And blah blah. blah. And he opens the door. There's nobody there. <laughs> yeah, leaves are blowing in. <laughs> it's, it's creepy, creepy yeah. man. There's not. There's no music. It's just the rustle of the leaves and the wind blowing. And it's it's really well done. Um, so he closes the door and it's just ringing again. And then you hear this voice. And it's like, trick or treat. <laughs> trick or treat. It's real creepy. It's here. like, dude, yeah. that's not a kid out there. It's like fucking Trogdor or something. <laughs> Lubden. Lubden or something's out there, guys. <laughs> so he opens the door again, and there's nobody out there. He looks out the window. He sees, like, the demon face. And, and he Jody's goes to, out there. He goes to, like, slam the door, and uh, the thing, like, kicks it open again. Yeah, this part's weird. It just, like, walks into his house, <sighs> like, right a little past the front door, reaches for the bowl of candy he has, like, on this little table. Yeah. And just like takes a piece of time. I always, takes a kiss. I always yeah. remember the hand like coming in and like plucking it out. Yeah. It's gross. And the and hands creepy. are weird. Yeah, mm. they're like really thin, and they have these big bulb. Yeah, finger these tips. Weird like bulbous fingers. It yeah. just takes a Hershey kiss, and it, like with like two fingers, and just like yeah. picks it up. Um, and then he goes to take more candy, and and uh, uh Mr. Killip like tries to stop him. And he, like, grabs his arm and his wristwatch falls off. Yeah, and this and he, is like, a weird cut right here or, like, a weird shot the way it's all yeah. kind of Put done. together, yeah. It's like, is he grabbing his hand or, like, hitting his hand or whatever? It's a weird It's a weird shot he, like, where he slides it, it off. Yeah, where he kind of, like, grabs his watch. Yeah. Where it, the watch it, falls to the ground, breaks. He, like, and then he, like, pushes this demon thing and it does, like, a back roll <laughs> somersault. And then, like, it's all reverse photography, yeah. which is cool. And, he, like, jumps back up. It, like, jumps on a uh, on his, uh, 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 porch railing. his porch railing. Yeah. yeah. And it's, like, waving at him and shit. And the door slams shut and he, like, steps on his watch and breaks it. Right. And then, and then he's perpetually so, stuck at midnight for so, the rest of this. Yeah. So he doesn't have any, no sense of time because, like, he goes into the kitchen at one point and then that clock's dead, too. Well, he looks at like a, it's either on the TV or he actually calls someone to find out what time it is. And it's like the emergency signal is saying it's 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, and it goes. It gets a little like surreal here because he's it's just the one guy by himself in his house. And yeah, he picks up the phone, tries to call his son. He is like, oh, yeah, the yeah. only phone number saved is his son's. Yeah, like his son's picking up. I guess if you're getting a call from dad at, at midnight, maybe you're going to pick up. But yeah, but he keeps getting like the uh, operator or yeah. like the um, what is it? It's not like a busy signal or like a it's some weird like 
it's it's reader. yeah it's the it's the woman from answer me on yeah. the other oh, line of the phone yeah. and it and it's uh it's harry um <laughs> it's harry anderson. it's harry anderson. anderson yeah of course he's obviously. like yeah do the words alternate universe mean anything to you and he hangs up no he does not want to happen no it's like at the sound of the tone the midnight that the time is midnight exactly yeah. and he's like what the fuck <laughs> midnight and he keeps calling he calls like like four times and he's like no 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 no. that's that's wrong yeah. that's wrong and he picks it up again and it's like the time is midnight still midnight yeah and well yeah, because he's like, well, there's definitely been a few hours have gone by. And he's like, still midnight. Well, he falls asleep again. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, huh, I, I must have been asleep for hours now. It feels like I slept for hours. I think I'll have some breakfast. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And he gets up and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, ah, it's still dark outside. Oh, we missed one thing, too. There's a creepy scene when he sits down on his couch again or his mm. chair. There's like a sack on the floor and it just starts moving. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. The goblin sack that he left in there. That's yeah. what it was. It yeah. like moves around and then I guess they had some roaches left over from Creep Show. I was yeah. about to say they're creeping up on him. Yeah, because they all come out of the bag. It's all gross and creepy. But yeah, after he wakes up, he goes into the kitchen. He sees the clock's dead and he's like, yeah, it's got to be morning. And he looks outside. And he's like, huh. Must be just a bunch of dark clouds. The sun's behind the dark clouds. It's, it's early. It's just Sorry. early. He's got like a glass, like a, a glass of water or something. He goes to take a sip out. It looks like curdled milk or some shit in there. Ah, oh, he drops the glass. It turns into bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, drops more, it. They're really getting their mileage from those uh, roaches. He Disgusting. like looks over. There's like roaches all over yeah. his like oven and stuff. Those are just ones they captured from the set of Creepshow 2. Well, Those right. Guys, these fucking roaches. <laughs> yeah, they built the set around them because they were still there. The fridge door opens and like an egg rolls out and smashes on the floor. There's more roaches in there. They come out of the eggs. Yeah, that's how they get you. As we find out. So now he's just like trying to get out of the house. Right. And uh, the, the back door is locked. The front door is locked. He like opens the he like rips the blinds down and he's trying to like break his way through the front yeah, window with his little cane, with his cane like, to get out it with like no force <laughs> the fucking tv static and he's like what's happening yeah. and he the the now the phone is off the hook just like yeah the current time is 12 o'clock exactly well he smashes the tv smashes the tv that blows out and um he's looking out the window and the face pops up again yeah oh i'm sorry there's a really creepy shot when he's in the kitchen where the face just comes up behind him, like, oh, yeah, like the real, yeah. yeah, and he's like, "That's not a mask. That's not a Halloween mask." And then he has this freak out. But then the culmination of this is him at the in the front of his house, and he's looking out the window and sees the demon like on a swing, and it's like waving. And he's still at him. waving at him. Yeah. yeah, he's just getting like tormented by this thing, just looking in through his windows. Yeah. And then he closes the blinds and he turns around. And it's right in his face. Yeah. And it's like trick or treat, chill up. <laughs> well, to keep saying that trick or treat, yeah. Yeah. tricks or, or treats. treats. Yeah. yeah. And then switches it. It's like treats or tricks. Yeah. <laughs> How about both? <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Then it's this weird shot again, mm. where the thing reaches up and grabs him by the throat, and he grabs the goblin, and like they both turn and like tumble and the camera rolls with him so it yeah. looks like it looks like the goblin like throws him to the ground and like breaks his neck yeah it's a weird shot and i think it's like because the actor's so old it's like they can't have a guy fall well, on the floor so yeah. it looks like they had him stand up mm -hmm. put a carpet on a on a board yeah and just like had the board like coming towards him to mm -hmm. make it look like he's falling yeah it's weird it's shot. It's kind of cool, though. It's quick. But yeah. It is cool. Yeah, it's just like, a strange like shot. Like they were trying something different. Yeah. Which I thought. Well, Savini's appreciated. like, well, if I'm going to direct this, I might as well try to do something different so that they remember that it was Savini. Granted, I know he's not technically the camera person. But... Well, I think it might have been Phil Abrams. That's what I'm oh, saying. Well, like, yeah, like, there like, you go. Like, there's all this kind of like inventive stuff for a television show, which they would probably forego if they didn't have to. It was under time constraints and stuff. True. But it, it feels like this one feels like a very fully formed storyboarded thing yeah. that they put together. And this feels a little more like cinematic. Yeah, than exactly. Most of our episodes, I mean, you know, pretty much all of the episodes are very like one shot oh, things yeah. or like maybe there's like a three camera set, dolly, maybe. you know, yeah. but it's um, like this one has some like atmosphere to it, which we don't, it's like we get here and there, but this whole episode is like, it, it's, it's creepy as hell. So this thing kills this old man and like, as it walks out, it like pats his head and just leaves. <laughs> It's and really kind of like like it doesn't do anything like super malicious. No, it's just tormenting the guy because he's just, you know, an asshole. Just because he's an asshole on yeah. Halloween. Thanks, Michael Doherty. Um, <laughs> well, there is one big difference, though. There is a big difference. 
Uh, I don't remember in in Michael Doherty's version, uh, the guy being sucked dry like a skeleton. Oh, he's desiccated. Oh, yeah, like a mummy. This is, this is weird. So the son shows back up and finds his dad dead. Then he calls the cops. And the investigator's like, oh, you better call yourself a good lawyer there, kiddo. And he's got like, some explaining to do. Like, what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? Yeah. He's like, this is the most serious case of neglect I've ever seen in my life. This man has been starving for seven weeks with nothing but Halloween candy yeah. to eat. Which is a killer final line. He's been walking around with a bag of Halloween candy for weeks to eat. So yeah. there's this desiccated corpse of his dad on the ground. <laughs> and it's so dead that they deduce that it's been there for seven weeks. That's how long that night lasted. And like the face on his dad here, it's this weird like sucked out. Oh, yeah. Face, like the cheekbones are all like it's accentuated great. and everything. The eyes are all bulged out. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's creepy. Yeah. And it holds on that yep. for the end of the episode until the, the credits roll, yeah. man. It's it's haunting. It's like it's, the episode yeah. could have very well ended with the goblin and the, and the old guy and like him dying. I just had the credits there. Like, oh, cool. There's the episode. But it goes the extra mile of like, now it's this weird thing. Now the son's responsible because like he's in this weird state. It's like, what actually happened here? Yeah. I, I think I think it's done like super, super yeah. well. And like the spirit of Halloween coming and like killing this guy for whatever reason. Yeah. You know? The moral of the story is to give out, ho- give give out, out candy on Halloween. And keep your pumpkin lit. Yep, or sure. turn your fucking porch light off <laughs> if you really don't want to be involved. They know you're home. He, he wants them. Yeah. The thing with this guy is he wants them to come to the no, door so he I can know. be like, fucking get out of yeah. here. Oh, yeah. That's definitely. He did, he's like, I don't want to be bothered. But like, he also craves the attention at the same time. Let's give him something to do. Yeah. Besides watching TV. <laughs> and or eat. Eating yeah. eggs. <laughs> and mayonnaise. <laughs> Gobbling. And Elmer's glue. <laughs> What is he doing with that? <laughs> Sniffing it, I guess. <laughs> Sniffing Elmer's. Okay. That's how he broke his neck. So what do we think of this one? Oh, that's a good one. I, it sounds like you guys like this more than I do based on what you both just have said. But yeah, this is really fun. Uh, the, the, it's not even really a twist. You kind of see it coming a mile away as soon as the goblin is introduced that this guy is going to probably die or have a really bad night either way. Uh, and, and that's exactly what happens. But the way we... The road we take to get there is very fun and uh, kind of ends in a, in a, I would say somber, but you want to see this character kind of get it. So it, it's just kind of creepy uh, with that the, the, the body. And you have to just like in the back of your head, think like, damn, Savini definitely saw this when he was in Vietnam. And that's why it looks so fucking realistic. And it just we saw goblins. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, exactly. It was every tooth was exactly where it needed to be. Uh, and he also saw dead bodies, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, I guess my point is it's very it's kind of bone chilling again. Yeah. I know it is a horror show, but I'm just kind of putting myself in the shoes of people watching this, you know, whenever this aired Friday night or whatever. And it's like, oh, God damn. I saw like I know it's fake, but it like basically looks like a real dead body. And that's like pretty impressive. Um, just really kind of comes together. Again, don't love it, but a very good episode. I, I can't disagree at all. Yeah, like what Sean said, with this airing, like right at, at you know a certain time, this came out. I think it was like October twenty seventh. It was right was on the. It? it was right on the cusp there, yeah. so it must have been like Halloween must have been that weekend yeah. or like fell on a Monday or so something. So that's like perfect timing. Yeah, it's like sometimes you'll get movies like Christmas movies coming out in the summer. Yeah. It's like, like, didn't Gremlins come out in like August or something? I, I want to say, yeah. yeah. It was also re released like in September. Or, okay. Like it, they released it twice, but yeah, okay. something like Predator that. Predator 2 comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, this Christmas or yeah. this Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. which is, it, that's weird. But it's like <laughs> oh, this the Predator one, it's 2 like, is a Thanksgiving movie. It's that's the opposite, right. kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like this came out right before Halloween. Mm. So, with along with like Simpsons and like all these like TV episodes that have like, there's always a Christmas episode or a Halloween like episode. Family Matters, Full yep. House, all that. It's like it's CGI like, Friday stuff. Yeah. So this lucked out being released right before Halloween, mm-hmm. get you in the spirit. Oh, big time. And it's a, I think it's a great way to do it. It's like, I love this episode. A hundred percent. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, seeing some old guy get tormented by the spirit of Halloween is a lot of fun. And I can see, like, I can, uh, well, first of all, let me just cap that off with the fact that like, and I can see why like Michael Doherty probably got inspired by it. I mean, it's clearly obvious yeah. that yeah. he was inspired by it. Um, and I think he, I think his thing, we're busted his balls, but I think he's, he did it successfully too. But I really love this one. I mean, what is not to love about this? It takes place on Halloween. Mm. There's a fucking goblin. That is the, that is the personification of, of Halloween and Samhain. And like, you have a banger effects team on this. You have Tom Savini himself directing the episode. You got Burger. You got Nicotero. You got French. Everybody's bringing it here. Um, and and again, like Abram on 
uh, the cinematography, like this is like an elevated uh, uh, Tales from the Dark Side episode. There's a lot more uh, going on production wise from a production standpoint here than most of these episodes. So it's like a, it's almost like a Halloween special of Tales mm. from the Dark yeah. Side, you know, uh, where they where they put a little bit more time and effort into like the special stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and it, it shows. And it's like, yeah. I, kind of, I wish they had a little more, like more opportunities to do sort of these bigger episodes. Yeah. Because it's like, and it's like, yeah, it's not perfect. You're still limited no, by I mean, like the budget here. It's for TV. Yeah. So. so it's like, you're getting as much as you can, like as much bang for your buck with a TV budget. And it's like, they're doing the best with what they got. Oh, absolutely. And I think Ray Poole's really good. Like mm-hmm. as, as the old man, as old man kill up. Um, I love his cadence with everything. Yeah. Like, I feel like this guy just in general at that time probably just didn't give a shit either. Um, cause he's like, I don't know the, the way that he's delivering these lines is also, it's both stale, but also angry at the same time, which yeah. I really like. Um, and the, yeah, like and just to cap that off, like you guys said, I mean, this comes out for Halloween. We are right on the cusp of Halloween and like, I would be so looking forward to this like I could see the commercial like in my head and I've yeah. never even seen it before, but like, you know, Tales from the Dark Side, this, you know, this Friday, uh, Halloween candy, you know, this show, old, the, thing, show the goblin waving, the waving stuff, yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I cannot wait yeah. to pop the popcorn, fire that up yeah. and, and, and dive into that and scare the shit out of myself. Break uh, out the candy corn. Yeah. Turn all the lights off and, and, and kick it with some Tales from the Dark Side. Um, I think it's really great. And I... I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I'm I'm pretty sure this is going to be my favorite episode of season two. But uh, yeah, I, I I really love this one. But yeah, let us know what you think about this episode. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you just in between on it? Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, hit like, please, and subscribe if you haven't. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor and leave us a five star review if you're digging the show. Uh, but until next time, I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean Rourke, and I'm Chris Barr. Tales from the Dark Side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us.